Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's episode of Your Perfect Palette, we'll be discussing the benefits of adding earth yellow watercolor paint to your palette. This warm, rich hue is a versatile color that can be used to add depth and character to your paintings. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced artist, earth yellow, in my opinion, is a must have for any artist's palette. So let's take a look here at this little graphic. And I have done um, a few episodes already on the primaries. So we've talked about yellows, the warm and cool yellows that I use in my palette, and as well as some additional ones, because what I use is by no means the end all be all of what people should use is just what works for me and what I've gotten used to. We've talked about uh, primary reds as well, and we've talked about primary blues. Now we're going to go inside a little bit. So I tend to speak about color um, being bright towards the outside of a color wheel or dull towards the inside of a color wheel. And for yellows, that dullness brings us into the earth yellow territory right around here. Um, I mean, it can be duller, and you can take, you know, um, either one of your primary yellows, and you can use complements to, to dull it down. But in my opinion, nothing really substitutes for a nice earth yellow pigment, especially for... You know, dropping a little yellow in the bottom of a spring sky. Uh, it just it has a different characteristic to it that, you know, if you lay it down on a piece of paper and bring a nice cool blue like a cobalt or something, you know, gently near it, it doesn't as readily mix to green as some of the main yellows that I use in my palette. So it's pretty indispensable in that regard. And I, I do tend to paint a, a lot of birds. And whenever I need that kind of earth yellow, it's more going to be something dull, um, like you know an ochre or one of the other types of pigments that we're going to be talking about in a moment. Um, so it's just uh, something that I can grab quickly without really having to take a in a different yellow and try to dull it down and get that same result. So earth yellow is pretty important for me. Let's take a look at some. Well, lots, actually. There are a remarkable amount of earth yellows out there. And hopefully by the time we're done here, you will realize there's, in my opinion, there's really kind of two main ones. Well, my opinion for me, I guess is probably a better way to say this. So we're talking about the dull yellows and that has us looking primarily in and around here. So this website that I'm using, and I'll include a link in the below of this video. Um, this is a color map, CIE lab color map made by Daniel Smith. This is a really, really great resource. Now it is specific to Daniel Smith paints, but it is a very nice visual um, rendering of colors. You can see as it goes around the outside, you kind of you get your traditional circular pattern of the color wheel. But the nice thing about this that I really appreciate is the way that these swatches are oriented the further away from center they are respectively to the others the brighter the chroma so as far as the duller yellows go you know all your brighter chroma yellows are going to be out this way and then your colors are going to dull as they come in towards center this is a pretty handy tool for kind of seeing you know what's a bright pigment versus a dull pigment Let's start taking a peek at a few of these. Um, so this is a dull yellow. I wouldn't you know, specifically refer to it as an earth yellow. 
it's a combination of a number of things. Naples yellow does have pigment white ore in there, as well as a pigment yellow and a pigment red. Um, it is a very popular um, paint with landscape painters and such. And I've seen uh, urban sketchers use it as well in some of their palettes. I've tried um, to use the Naples yellow a number of times, but it is a it listed as semi-transparent, but I always find them personally a little bit towards the opaque side. And if you've watched any of my other videos from this palette series, you will know that my preference, not whether it's right or wrong, it's simply my preference, is colors, pigments that are um, transparent to semi-transparent. And it does list it as semi-transparent, but again, my experience with it personally has been it's a, not quite that. It's a little bit more towards the opaque. Um, and that's likely a result of having pigment white in it. So Naples yellow, there's one. We'll look at this one right here. Now this is where we're gonna start seeing some similarities. There aren't a lot of pigments uh, for, the, for the earth yellow. Um, so this is going to be one of them. You're going to see this pop up. Um, Verona Gold Ochre. So this is a pigment yellow 43. Okay, It's a granulating pigment. Not terribly granulating. It does granulate a little bit. And it's listed as transparent. And this is a pretty lovely paint. But the most important thing is the pigment in here. Now, you will see a fair bit of variety in this. And it depends on how it's... I believe how it's treated by the paint. Um, this is a natural, it says Verona Gold Ochre. That's the name. And this is the case with a lot of, of um, paint manufacturers. Regardless of the pigment itself, they will give it a, a nice name. Verona Gold Ochre sounds lovely, right? Um, I've seen this with blues. I've spoken to it before in a previous episode on blues where like Holbein, They'll have blues called Peacock Blue and Process Blue and all these types of, of lovely names. Um, but the, it's the pigments are kind of the things that we really want to kind of pay attention to. Now, just because something has got the same pigment name doesn't always mean it's going to be exactly the same because there is some variation that can be... Uh, how, do I, how do I say it? Depending on, on, the, on the lab or the paint manufacturer, there's things that can be done to you know, change the overall color of an actual pigment. And I actually will probably end up talking about that in a few moments. But this one is Pigment Yellow 43. And Pigment Yellow 43 is actually called Natural Yellow Iron Oxide. And it is a fairly light fast, well, very light fast, Listed as opaque, but it's, you know, it's not really. Um, according to Daniel Smith, their version with the PY43 is transparent. So I haven't found it to be too opaque. It can be, you know, light valued to moderately dark value, depending on the manufacturer. And it can be moderately intense um, to a very dull earth yellow. Also, again, depending on the manufacturer. So, you know, if you've got a, a tube of paint and it's got PY43 on it, give that thing a wash out and, and have a look at it. It's, um, that's always the best way. So, PY43. So, Verona Gold Ochre. Let's take a look here. We'll skip that one. But again, hey, do you notice that? PY43. Again. And it's going to look slightly different than the other one. And we'll skip that one. That's one of their gemstones, bronzite. We'll skip that one. Here's another one. Chrome Titanate Yellow, PBR24. It's interesting, PBR, Pigment Brown 24. Um, chrome Titanate PBR. It's um, fairly light fast. Uh, it's semi-opaque. Um, it says low staining. I think it can be a little bit more staining than, than this implies. 
moderately light valued, moderately intense earth yellow pigment. Okay, and this can be a, a fairly lovely one, but I really wanted to kind of speak quickly about the pigment that's in here. You'll see in a, in a moment, once we get the other one up here, there aren't an awful lot. There's the PY43 again, burgundy yellow ochre. There's the other one, PY42. So we talked about the natural yellow iron oxide. Now this is the synthetic yellow iron oxide. So it's, you know, quite light fast. It semi-transparent. Um, it is a little bit more staining than non-staining, in my opinion. And it can be pretty light valued to moderately dark valued, depending on the intensity of your mixture. So it's a really lovely earth yellow. And I want to find, there's transparent yellow oxide. So also another version of PY42. Uh, where's the one I'm looking for? There it is. Raw Sienna. Okay. This has PBR7, pigment brown, I think, what I call it. Um, seven. Now, this is a natural iron oxide. Um, they can be any of several colors. You'll see PBR7 show up in burnt sienna. You'll see PBR7 turn up in burnt umber, um, both hues that I will talk about in the episode on earth oranges that will come soon. But it can be any of several colors, including earth yellow, earth orange, earth red, brown, or black. Now, this is from um, Bruce McAvoy's website, what I'm about to mention here, um, handprint.com, which I'll also include a link for. Um, so they can be these colors depending on one, the quantity of trace manganese, aluminum, or silica in the pigment, two, the size of the pigment particles, and three, whether the pigment is in its hydrated form, contains some water in the iron oxide crystal, or is calcinated, burnt, or roasted, in kilns or foundry ovens, which drives off the water. So as you can see, just from the one pigment itself, depending on certain circumstances, you can have a number of different versions, of the same pigment. So when it comes to looking on your tubes and just going, oh, it's PBR7, it should look like this. It's not going to be the case this one, and you'll see it show up in a number of different paints. Um, but for this instance, raw sienna. So I have preloaded these to the menu, and we'll take a look at them. So there is one in here that I didn't talk about, which I will in a moment, but I've kind of tried to organize these across going from Kind of the cooler, dull yellows to warmer, more towards the orange dulls. And as we go across here, you can see PBR7, PY43, PY42, PY42, quinacridone gold. Um, it's now, it used to be, I think it was P0 or PO49, but it's no longer made anymore. Now it's a try to get a similar hue to it with a combination of two different pigments. It's a bit, it's a lovely hue of a slightly dull than a, a real warm yellow, but it's not for me dull enough. We've got yellow ochre, PY43. Here's the chrome titanate yellow, PBR24. There's PY42, PY43 again with the burgundy yellow ochre, PY43. PY43 for Italian deep ochre. Naples yellow has that mixture again. Throw in a gold ochre, PY43. And then what I included is buff titanium, which is a pretty popular um, pigment as well. It is a very dull yellow, but I can usually get something very similar to it with a little bit of a dark neutral and some of my warm, well, my cool yellow. Um, but, and it doesn't share, well, I guess, the same quality as some of the earth yellows. So 
I just ran through a whole bunch here. And you see that we really are speaking to two main pigments, PY43, PY42. With the other addition of the PBR24 for Chrome Titanate Yellow, and then the ingredients for the Quinacridone Gold. And then we have the PBR7 for the raw sienna. Now, for an earth yellow, simply put, either a raw sienna or a yellow ochre. Those are really, for me, the, the two options. And when it comes to which one I'll choose, I tend to lean towards yellow ochre over raw sienna. And if you see just even from here, raw sienna is a little bit warmer to, to my eyes. Um, and yellow ochre going to what would be the next color I'm going to talk about is earth oranges. I can use my yellow ochres with some earth oranges to kind of get that similar warmth to a raw sienna. So like I would speak about in the episode on yellows or reds or blues, where, you know, for two, um, when a split complementary palette, I'm going to have two reds and I want them to have some distance between the two of them on the color wheel. The same would go for choosing an earth yellow and then also an earth orange. I don't want them to be too close to each other. So I would tend to gravitate towards a yellow ochre. And then when it comes to the other versions of a yellow, so the PY43, there's, oops, that was not planned. Sorry about that. Um, PY43. Another PY43, the French ochre, burgundy yellow ochre, so on and so forth. These all start to be just slightly different versions of a yellow ochre. So I, having played with a number of them, I tend to just go for a straight up yellow ochre. French ochre is lovely, but I can get a similar hue with just the regular yellow ochre, and I can get it a fair bit stronger, which is a nice option to have should you want it. So I think that's about all I really want to talk about as far as the earth yellows go. So in a nutshell, it's a very useful pigment to have in your palette. I, I could not do without it. Right, so if I'm starting with my split primary of two yellows, two reds, two blues, the next thing that I would want to have in my palette is an earth yellow. And it comes down to two main ones for me, and it's either going to be a yellow ochre or it's going to be a raw sienna. All the rest of these are just very subtle differences between kind of the two main ones. And yellow ochre is PY43. Pigment yellow 43, natural yellow iron oxide. And then the raw sienna is PBR7, which is a natural iron oxide as well. And as I mentioned, it can actually be a variety of different colors, um, as it also ends up being the ingredient for burnt sienna too. It just depends upon some existing conditions for the pigment itself. So I hope you found this information useful. Um, and I do hope that you either have or consider adding an earth yellow to your palette. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please do so below. And if you've gotten any sort of benefit out of this video or even other ones in this um, your perfect palette series, um, do like and subscribe. Until the next time, thank you all very much and happy painting. Bye.